Welcome to the sewing site featuring Sew With Skill. Today we have a really fun, quick, easy project for you called unsponges. Now, most of you have regular sponges in your kitchen, and you'll know that of course over time those sponges start to smell, they um, have a, a buildup of bacteria, often get moldy, and need to be replaced really often. Not only is that not an um, economical solution, but it also isn't very environmentally friendly. So a great alternative to that is what we call unsponges. Now these unsponges will replace your kitchen sponges. The biggest benefit to these is that throw them in the washing machine when you need to. They can be air dried, they can be um, dried in the dryer, um, and you don't have to worry about all that bacteria and mold buildup that you do that gets embedded in the normal kitchen sponges. So this um, one that I made right here is topped with quilting cotton. I just like to be able to customize the look of the top of it, and it's backed with some terry cloth. I had a really old, dingy washcloth that I've been meaning to throw away for years and I haven't, so I just repurposed it um, for this great unsponge. The terry cloth is also a really good option on the back because it's a heavier duty um, unsponge and can have really good scrubbing potential on it. Some other fabric choices that you can use would be flannel. Um, you can also use like a, a muslin for the back of it. Um, anything with real good scrubbing potential depends on how um, light duty or heavy duty that you need it to be. For this particular one that I'm gonna show you how I made, I also um, have two additional layers of the terry cloth inside of it because of its absorbency potential. So you wanna make sure that whatever you use for the internal layers does absorb well um, and it's just a really great, fun project. Um, also, is a great stocking stuffer, and I don't know if that sounds strange or not, but I think that a lot of people would really appreciate environmentally friendly options and alternatives, and it's also a great scrap buster. I mean, most of these supplies you have handy um, around your sewing room, and um, if not, you can just repurpose some other, even old towels. Um, that is a great option. So let's go ahead and get this sewn. It's really quick and really fun and um, you'll be done in no time. Okay, so here I'm going to cut the quilting cotton for the top layer and then three layers of this terry cloth. The terry cloth will be for the middle two layers and then for the bottom layer as well. So cut them in four inch by six inch rectangles. And now that we have all of our rectangles cut out, we're just gonna go ahead and stack them. Now the middle layers are gonna go on the bottom of the pile, and then the back and top layers are gonna go right sides together on the very top, just like this. Because when you turn it right side out, you wanna make sure that the right sides of the top and bottom layer are facing out. In this particular case, my terry cloth doesn't have a right or a wrong side, so I can't really put that <laughs> bottom layer wrong but make sure that you pay attention to the right and wrong sides of the fabric if you're using something uh, or another type of material where it does matter. And then just go ahead and pin all the layers together. I'm just pinning them at each corner. And we're gonna be taking about a half of an inch seam allowance. And so it's okay if they don't line up perfectly, but it's always easier, of course, if they do. You can adjust the size of this larger or smaller, of course, if you'd like. I like the four by six. This is pretty thick to sew through, so this is gonna be fun on my sewing machine, but I really like the feel of terry cloth on these unsponges. Okay, so now with a half of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna sew all around the outer edge, leaving a gap so that we can turn it right side out with. All right, remove your pins and then make sure that all layers are sewn through. I have, again, a gap that I can turn mine right side out. I probably should have made that gap bigger, but I'm going to take my pinking shears. And again, this is a lot of fabric to use my pinking shears through, but I want to reduce the bulk at my seams. You can use regular scissors for this. Uh, because I'm using quilting cotton on the top, I just prefer to use pinking shears where I can. My mom would be proud. I always hated using pinking shears when I was younger. <laughs> I'm not sure why. 
right? This is pretty bulky. Um, make sure you can also clip the corners if you would like to make it easier for um, you to turn it right side out and to make sure that you have crisper corners. All right, this other long side. And then this last side, I'll leave a little more room on that opening so that I can tuck in that seam allowance when I turn it right side out. All right, and then turn, uh, take that top layer and turn it right side out, tuck in the seam allowance on the right hand side and push out all your corners for the round finish or crisp finish. And then you're going to top stitch all around the edge of the seam allowance um, to make sure that you close that opening as well on the right hand side. And now we're going to sew another line about a half of an inch inside of that outer top stitching and you're done. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know that I enjoyed making it. Please like the video, subscribe to our channel if you want to be notified of new content as it gets posted. And thanks for being here.